One year ago, the world was just getting its grubby hands on Breath of the Wild for the first time. With barely any games, the Switch was proving to us that it wasn't just a gimmick. Zelda was beautiful, a technical marvel. It won every Game of the Year award, even though it came out in March. Now, there are so many games for the console that I have a hard time keeping track of releases. After a year of use, can we confidently say that with all of its faults, and there are faults, that the Nintendo Switch earned its spot in our backpacks next to our iPads, our gaming laptops, our Vitas or 3DSs, and in our living rooms amongst our PS4s and Xbox Ones. The Switch has been a massive success. In its first year, it was reported that it sold nearly 15 million units. For comparison's sake, the Wii U only sold 13.5 million in its entire lifespan. At first, the Switch was difficult to find. People were claiming that Nintendo was up to their old tricks again, purposely restricting the production of the Switch to build up hype. That would be ridiculously stupid of them. Nintendo just couldn't keep up with demand. It was hugely successful, and let's not forget, that their previous console was a massive failure, so they had to be careful. By the time the holidays rolled around, Switches were in stores all over America, so this very quickly wasn't a problem anymore. The biggest concern last year was the lack of games. This also very quickly wasn't a problem anymore. Zelda was enough to carry the Switch until Mario Kart 8 came out, Mario Kart 8 was enough to carry the Switch until Splatoon 2 came out, and Splatoon 2 was enough to carry the Switch until Super Mario Odyssey came out. Of course, there were also sprinklings of great games in between those. Zelda and Mario are still the Switch's two big heavy hitters. Each of those games could easily last you 100 hours of gameplay, and there's nothing like Mario or Zelda on any other game console. One of these games alone should be enough to sell you on the Switch, and that's exactly what happened to us early adopters. It's easy to write this off. So what, it has two good games? Yeah, it has two of the best games of all time in just its first year. That's a big deal. Piggybacking on the success of the Switch are third-party developers. At first, they were hesitant. The Wii U didn't do too hot, so they didn't want to put too many resources into another potential failure, except Ubisoft. They were all in, and Bethesda had one toe in at first. But back in September, we had one of the most surprising announcements. Bethesda was porting Doom over to the Switch, and we would get the new Wolfenstein game in 2018. These are graphically intensive games. Bethesda saw that the Switch was worth the extra effort. Rocket League is currently a fan favorite on the Switch. Psyonix is heavily supporting it with updates. They're releasing an update for the Switch version that will bump the resolution up to 900p or 1080p, depending on whether or not you want the frame rate locked at 60 frames per second. Of course, you could just play Rocket League on another device at 1080p 60, but you can't throw that other device in your bag. Here's that one guy, oh, it's a gaming laptop, I can throw that in my bag. You can't throw that in your bag, like you can throw a Switch in your bag, it's not the same size. Think about how small a gaming laptop would have to be. Developers and publishers are finding out that consumers are willing to compensate for a lower graphical power with portability. It's a trade-off that Nintendo had doubled down on. Most people I know play their Switches in portable mode lounging on the couch. Their Switches barely, if ever even, touch a dock. I am an outlier. I play my Switch almost exclusively in docked mode. That would be because I never leave the house, and when I do play, I'm usually streaming. Twitch.tv slash Wolfden, gaming.youtube.com slash Wolfden. I do enjoy being able to travel with a high-powered game console in such a small form factor. It's a great addition to a mobile streaming setup. I was so excited to be able to play the latest Mario on a plane. The idea of that sounds so cool, but how often am I really on a plane? Last year, I took the train to PAX East and I was stoked to play Zelda on the train and then I just never pulled my Switch out for some reason. I was like doing work the whole time, but whatever. Don't get me wrong. Having the peace of mind to know that I could take these games with me if I need to is awesome. I'm in the process of moving all my stuff to an office. That's why I'm in my room right now. That means that all of my game consoles will be there too, except for the Switch. That I'll just be able to toss in my bag with all my other junk and take back and forth. 
the Switch is the perfect addition to my arsenal of junk in my bag. This tiny thing can play some powerful games, but not every game needs to be a technical marvel to be good. If the game can run just fine on my Switch, I want it on my damn Switch. Why would I want to play Sonic Mania on my PS4 when I can have it in my bag at all times? This also makes it the perfect place for indie games. These developers have the potential for a resurgence in popularity with a Switch port. And if these aren't enough games for you, importing games is super easy. You can just make an account and set the region to Japan and that's it. You're all set. Even physical Japanese carts will work in your Switch right out of the box. Let me go through all the games that I have on mine real quick. Mr. Shifty is a fun little indie game. Goshen Horn. Still never played Phantom Trigger. The Japanese Sonic Forces demo, what's that still doing here? Doom, of course. Skip right over Sonic Forces. If you can get a good deal on Super Bomberman R and have some friends to play with, I still stand by that Bomberman is a great game. It caught way more flack than it should have. <coughs> Highly recommend Gunvald if you like Mega Man X and it's on sale. It's frequently on Amazon for around $30, which isn't too bad. Mario Kart 8 is a must-have for anybody who wants to get people to play with them, especially casual players. Celeste is a must-have if you're into 2D platformers. Same with Sonic Mania. Zelda, obviously Zelda. Owlboy is a very good 2D side-scroller. Splatoon 2 is good. I feel like you know if you're gonna like Splatoon 2 before you even buy it. If you're on the fence about it and don't have friends that play it, maybe skip it. That doesn't mean that I don't enjoy Splatoon 2. Splatoon 2 is great. It's just not for everybody, and I and I know that. Inner Space was very disappointing. This arcade archives port of Super Mario vs. is terrible, don't buy it. Rocket League is a must-have. Super Mario Odyssey is more of a must-have. It was my personal favorite game of last year and my favorite game on the Switch. And Payday 2, which is light years better if you play with friends, but there are so many other great games on here that are probably better to play with friends. This console is built for multiplayer. It has two controllers on it at all times. So if you're playing alone and somebody enters the room, you could just break off a controller for them. It's always ready to party. Yay! <laughs> Those are party sounds. I've talked a lot about the Switch's flagship games and what it has already, but there's still so much more to come. Kirby is very soon. It might even be out by the time you're watching this. Dark Souls, freaking Dark Souls is coming to the Switch. As of right now, there are some big titles that are speculated to be coming out within the Switch's second year. These are confirmed games. They just don't have a release date yet. We have a new Fire Emblem, Bayonetta 3, and the bigger ones, Metroid Prime 4 and a brand new full featured main series Pokemon game. So there is plenty to be excited about coming soon. We'll also be getting much better online functionality later in the year. As it stands right now, the Switch still can't do voice chat without the mobile app. Journalists were giving Payday 2 a bad review because it doesn't have voice chat, but that's not their fault. It's the Switch's fault. Online games are hit or miss. Rocket League makes it really easy to join up with your friends. Payday 2 is eh. Splatoon 2 works great, but you can't play on a team with your friends against other people until you hit a certain level and unlock ranked play. Nintendo just isn't doing online very good right now. That's not to say that you can't play games with your friends online at all. You can. I've had tons of fun in Mario Kart, Rocket League, Payday, Splatoon 2 with private lobbies, Bomberman, hell, even Doom has multiplayer. It'll just be way easier come September to manage your account, hopefully manage your friends list because mine's getting a little big, and hopefully they get rid of this stupid app and integrate everything into the Switch itself. Switch Online will also come with some free retro games, but it'll cost money just like Xbox Live or PlayStation Plus. Significantly less money at only $20 a year though, so not too bad. I've called the Switch the perfect ancillary gaming console before, meaning that it's great to go along with another console that you have to play the more higher-end AAA stuff. But I guess that depends on your gaming habits. I still stand by that if you want to play either Mario or Zelda, or maybe even both, that it's worth buying an entire console just for one of those games. 
just don't expect to be playing every single mainstream release on your Switch. Even if the next Call of Duty comes out on the Switch, which I think it might, don't expect the online to be as good as the PlayStation Network or Xbox Live. Get it for the exclusives. Get it for the indie stuff. Get it for the local multiplayer games because no other consoles or developers are as focused on local multiplayer as Nintendo is. Get it for the portability, but again, that's not all that it's good for. This thing is a jack of all trades and it's a master of some of those trades. Some people consider the Switch to be too big to be truly portable. I think the best argument against that is all the kids who game on iPads. They don't care and they have backpacks for a reason. If that's your logic, the only truly portable gaming device is your phone because that's always with you. I'm not sticking a 3DS in my pants either. The battery life was a big point of contention for a lot of people when it was first announced to be only three hours, but that's only with graphically intensive games like Zelda. With something like Sonic Mania, you're looking more at about five to six hours. Again, I mostly play in docked mode, so this isn't really a problem for me. But in the rare case that I am, say, on a plane, I either just play for three hours, because let's face it, that's a pretty long play session, or I plug in a USB battery power bank. The Switch uses a USB Type-C port, so whatever you use to charge your phone or USB device, you can use to charge this. Speaking of which, there are some essential accessories that I think are necessary for the Switch that can get pretty expensive. If you're playing in docked mode, I don't think the Joy-Con grip is gonna cut it. You're going to need the Pro Controller and that can get pretty expensive. I'd also recommend the SN30 Pro, but that's not that much cheaper. I've made videos on all of these things in the past that will link in a card right here along with a playlist at the end of the video so you can watch it afterwards and see what you're missing. It's just some suggestions of what I think are the best stuff to go along with your Switch. If you're going to be bringing your Switch back and forth between multiple locations, an additional official Nintendo Switch dock can get pretty expensive too. The Best Buy Insignia dock comes with a charger and isn't that much money or get one of the cheapo ones on Amazon, but for those, you're gonna want an additional charger. And let's not forget a case for the Switch. All of these things start to add up eventually. It could be a pretty cheap console at the bare bones level, but you could end up spending a pretty penny on this thing. So after all of that, in 2018, in year two of the Switch, why would you buy one? Only buy a Switch if you're going to play either Zelda, Mario, Metroid, or Pokemon. Only buy a Switch if you want to play a handful of the indie stuff that was ported over to the Switch. Or only buy a Switch if you have a console already for all of the big AAA stuff and want something to play while you're out and about enjoying life. Any of this criteria is good enough for you to buy a Switch. Personally, I feel comfortable saying that this is the best game console ever. Just because of its innovation, and because there has never been anything else on the market like it. And clearly I'm not tainted by nostalgia. I know there's been plenty of other game consoles that have been amazing, but this thing does what none of them have ever done before. And yeah, it has its flaws. The online isn't that good. I'm hoping that eventually it'll get a lot better, but the portability and the convenience just compensates so much for all of its minor shortcomings. The success of the first year proves to me that the coming years will be monumental for the Switch and for Nintendo. You will most likely have a great time with yours as well. And if you have one already, what do you guys think about your Nintendo Switch? Is it everything that you were hoping for? Is it better than what you were expecting? Leave it in the comments below, at me on Twitter, all this other social media garbage. We've got new videos all of the time and live streams here on YouTube and over on Twitch. Here's our schedule right here. Here's that playlist of those videos that I was talking about throughout this video that have some suggestions on what you can get for your Switch. And of course, the most important things that you can do is subscribe and share this video with a friend, a friend who is maybe on the fence about buying a Switch or maybe they just got their own. Thank you guys very much. You have yourselves a very good week. Yeah, I'm gonna knock everything over.